Dart records were introduced in Dart 3. And they are pretty useful because records are type that hold custom data. And how do you write types? And you will see how useful it is. So let's say we have var person and we can say we can give it a name and then we say the name is Timmy and let's say the age is 20. Now we have created a record here because it is a custom type here. And if you over on the person here, you can see that it has inferred the type here and assigned it to the name and also to the age. Now you can see the type here is of int age and of string name. And in fact, we can do print. We will open our parenthesis person dot name. You can see that we have access to the name. We have access to the age. In fact, when you print the run type type, it prints and it prints age and it prints a string. So basically what we have here is the same thing as this. We have given it a type and we have explicitly told the type. Now, if we do person dot name, we'll be able to print Timmy here. We can do the same as age. So how is it useful for us? Now, before, if you wanted to, let's say you have some data from a REST API, and then you want to decode that data to use in your app, usually you decode and then map it to a class. But with that record, you can actually just play around with it. So let's, for an example, let's say we have a method and we say the method is for now, let's uh, say it is get person. We are getting a person and here, so when you are getting some data in from the back end, it usually comes as a JSON and the JSON usually comes as a map. We're going to be looking at map later in this course, but for now, the map has a type that looks something like this. It's a map of type string and dynamic usually. And then let's say we open our brackets. Now we can return a record here. Usually when you do this kind of stuff, you will create a from JSON factory in your class to map all the data in your JSON to a class. But this time we are simply going to return a record here and then say, JSON, when you find name in the JSON, we want you to return it as a string. When you find age in the JSON, we want you to return it as an int. Now the type here will simply be string and int. So this returns a record here. Now, here we have name, we have age. So we can, you can actually interchange it here and say int string name and int age. It doesn't matter anyways. So here, instead of um, equating it as this, we just say get person. And it's looking for a JSON here. So let's give it a JSON. JSONs usually look something like this. So JSON usually has 
the name John we have an age which is 30 here I think we are missing something can't be assigned to okay yeah we need to say we need to give it a var here and actually get rid of this yeah so here's what we have so what we actually have is that we are giving it a record and say once we do a get person and we pass in a JSON of map string dynamic here, it should return a record of string and int, which we have here. So let's say you want to use any of this. We just print, we can just print uh, name and the age. So you have access to the name. You can see that it sort of deconstructs it into name and age, and it is called pattern. So what we have done here is we have created a method that when we pass in a JSON, it's going to return a name as a string, as a record, a name as an age, as a record, and then return the pattern. It transforms these variables, this record, into two new variables. Two new variables, you see, name and age. And then you have access to your name and you have access to your age. So with this, we'll be able to go into classes because I wanted to talk about records and patterns because we'll talk about variables. And you can see that records are a type, a custom type. And then patterns, when you, in our case, you we are able to have access to name and age. So when you transform a record into variables, it is called patterns.